Hello everybody, I'm Paul. And I'm Andrew. And welcome back to the Fan Voice. We're happy to be um, starting our lucky number seven episode. Yay, number seven. And we got some pretty darn cool information for you today, so um, I guess we'll start out with some of the shoutouts. Okay. So this week we got a ton of love from both Connor Tridey and Barias Steiner, who... Um, replied to a few of our things and also will be contributing to our primary topic for the day, which we'll be mentioning momentarily. Yes. So first off, we'll just go through a couple of our uh, reply postings. Uh, first off, a reply to our last podcast about superpowers. I asked, mm -hmm. what what superpower would you have if you could have one? And then Connor tried. He said, the power to seduce at will. <laughs> Which is a really good one. Oh, absolutely. But if you were to ask me, Connor has that power already. <laughs> you were a yes, stud, he Connor. Does. Yes, he does. <laughs> but, um, okay, uh, so Connor said the power to seduce at will, and Bariah Steiner replied to that, just saying, that's called boobs. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. You're not wrong. <laughs> no. <you're, laughs> Is that why it's so not, hard for guys? I, know, I yeah, we don't just, have boobs. Is it just the boobs? Yeah. It might be. You <laughs> might be onto something there. You might be onto something. I'm going to go ahead and stick to my story that I just don't have boobs. Yeah. That's why I can't seduce people. Yeah. I agree. I'm going to start I using agree. that as an excuse, Brad, you know? <laughs> um, next is a posting from the Epic Song playlist that a, I posted. Oh, uh, yeah, which was awesome, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Last weekend, uh, it's such such a great epic playlist, and we we've had so many memories with that one. It was just one was that awesome. we burned a long time ago yep. in college. A long time ago in college. <laughs> yeah, that sounds weird. <laughs> it was not that long ago. <laughs> it seems long ago, actually. But yeah, but uh, we're old. Uh, I feel old. We're not old. <laughs> Shut up. <Paul. laughs> anyway, uh, Connor tried to reply to that playlist as well, and he said. He gave us a really cool reply. He yeah. said, Music is a resource we have to rescue, restore, inspire, and mold ourselves. To me, these drives and songs experienced with close friends is the rawest form of joy that I've felt. Someday I will make an epic playlist of my own that will rival this one and the countless others you've made. Um, referring to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well... <laughs> Bring it on, Connor. <laughs> you have a rival. Ah, ha, ha, ha. But I'm seriously looking forward to that. It's going to be great. I, I have a it. feeling, Connor, you could make an awesome epic playlist. I really do. Yeah, he, really he do. needs to get yeah. on that. <laughs> it could be amazing. And um, <laughs> our last uh, posting shout out goes to um, Joey Federson, who replied to our Kingdom Hearts World podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, he basically talked about him and our friend Tommy mm -hmm. just discussing it before and um, it's interesting what he says at the end though I'm sure all the worlds are already decided yeah and I I saw I saw this I saw this I saw that he had posted this and I went oh yeah that's a really good point and yeah. I kind of already kind of already in the back of my head had known that um, which is why stuff like Star Wars is so like I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. Because they got acquired right. really late into the process, and now it's, like, uh -huh. all up in the air. So when he said that, but I was you like, know, yeah, that's a really good point. The one thing they're doing is taking their time. It's true. And <laughs> this is the other thing, too, is it can still be delayed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they haven't given an exact date. They haven't even really given a time frame at this point. No, they haven't given us anything. Yeah, so... Really. <laughs> Which so is kind of like, depressing. Yeah, it will cod, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like he's got a really good point. Like, they could all be decided. But at the same time, they could just be like, oh, we're just going to delay it. Yeah, yeah. And make another world. I'm not 100% but... sure personally that they've decided everything. But personally, just for the sake of progressing, I hope they have decided already. You that's know? that's what I'm thinking too. Is yeah. I'm like, if if we're on track to release this next year, they better have decided everything. Exactly. You exactly. gotta get that done. Yeah. 
But so. I, oh, this E3, I'm really hoping we see something yeah. legitimate because the process has been so slow. Yeah. The first, what is it? The first teaser was last E3. Yeah. And not much has come after no. that. It's kind of crazy. Come on, Tetsuya Nomura. It's been almost a year. I mean, we, we just have to wait till E3 to see if they have, like, gameplay or I don't know something about close gameplay, to that. man. If I've, we get gameplay... I'm, I'm so discouraged at the moment <laughs> just because of the progression. I feel like if we get gameplay, we have, like, a 2015 release date. Yeah. If we don't get gameplay, it's up in the air. Yeah. Still. So... And that's why I'm like, E3 is like the main factor The for deciding me. factor yeah. in this whole it's, it's issue. It's going to be, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, let's, all we can do is hope for the best. Yeah, seriously. I hope you're right, though, Joey. I really hope they have decided. Yes. Because I, so we don't, yeah, so there's we don't something, have... <laughs> one less huge issue the yeah. team has to deal with. They just mm -hmm. need to get this done, yeah. seriously. Well, do it right, but... Yeah, <laughs> they do need to get this done because yeah. they have had plenty of darn time. I'm like sorry. The hype is still really strong, but if you oh, keep yeah. releasing stuff and then never actually release the game, it's just gonna die down. Driving me yeah. nuts, man. Okay, so we have a few more shout outs for Connor Tridy and Bryce Steiner, but we're gonna integrate those into our main topic. Um, I'm still going to tease it. I'm not going to say it yet. All right. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> so um, we're going to go on to news we now. Some news. we got some pretty <sighs> awesome things. Um, first off is uh, Lindsey Sterling's second album has released. And um, for the Only album. Yeah. For those of you who don't know Lindsey Sterling, she is a uh, really up-and-coming artist who really sets herself apart from any... Um, popular artist yeah, before she's, her time. she's definitely completely different. She's definitely born from the internet. Oh, um, absolutely. Because she just kind of does her own thing and yeah. it doesn't really matter what, you know, a label says or anything. And no. it, she definitely makes it work and she's incredibly popular right now. So yeah. Po and, but even popularity, popularity aside, she's incredibly unique because mm -hmm. she's yeah. primarily a vi violinist integrating electronica yeah. into her work and that's something i feel it's, that we haven't really yeah, seen before at least so publicized it's you very know? unique and it's definitely not it's definitely not something i've ever seen before yeah and so that's why i really like the first album i have not listened to the full second album yet but it's, hopefully it's we, absolutely yeah, gorgeous we're we, gonna talk about yeah this we're gonna depth we might future. this might be a main topic yeah, at some point yeah because we want to talk about her second album and, and just her in her in general yeah Definitely. Lindsay Sterling, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the second piece of news we have is actually Call of Duty. So this is kind of interesting that last week they, um, they, it got leaked, basically. Um, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which sounds like somebody just went and chose Modern and then looked in the th thesaurus. And I was like, <laughs> why did, like, really? But anyway, it's set in the future. No one's surprised. Oh, dang. No one's surprised by that, right? Like... It's like, where else do you go? You're not going to do another modern one. And Black Ops 2 was near future. This one's kind of far future. Yeah. It's much more futuristic. There's like I, crazy I, ass hover bikes in it. Oh. It's, I don't know. It's Are they going to have strange. aliens? So I'm guessing that that's going to be the, because Extraction, I believe it's called Extraction, is, uh, was like the zombies of the last game, but it was aliens. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was Black Ops 2. So, Or not Black Ops 2, Ghosts, excuse so me. So they're already heading in that direction. Yeah, so they're already heading in that direction. So if this company, if this studio goes with that again, then we might see like a, that mode back again. Yeah, um, But yeah, so this one's set in the future, and it was just kind of leaked, and then they sort of just announced it, which I thought was they handled great. <sighs> They were like, oh, it's leaked. It was supposed to come out on Sunday. Looks like the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, ah, oh, whatever. And so they just released the trailer on YouTube and made a post about it. That's And cool. released the press release early. So I was like, okay, I appreciate that. And the thing that surprised me, I was not surprised by Future. I was not surprised by any of that. The thing that surprised me is that Kevin Spacey's in it. Hmm. So he just shows up in the trailer. And I was like, what just happened? Why is Kevin Spacey in Call of Duty? But he is. He's the main bad guy, basically, oh, in the Call okay. of Duty game. And it's full motion capture and um, voice acting by him. You know what? It's it's cool, but um, I was 
kind of like seeing stuff like this coming, you know, because well, recently we've yeah. been seeing big actors, celebrity, yeah. Get into spot it. Mm -hmm. c celebrity spotlights in video games to try and sell them. Yeah, and it's I really mean, interesting. It's, it is really interesting, and I feel like you know because we saw that with um, uh, Ellen Page's game Beyond yeah. Two Souls. We right. saw Ellen Page, not only Ellen Page but Willem Dafoe. Yeah, so two very big actors. Right, and then this is the kind of the same thing. You're right. Exactly. Like, they brought in Kevin Spacey, who is he's getting so popular in our age mm -hmm. group because. He went and he made House of Cards. So then everybody who canceled cable and has Netflix now knows about House of Cards and now knows about Kevin Spacey. Okay. And then they go out and they see him talking about how the internet is the place that we need to be releasing video content. He's talking about it. And yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that speech by him. Oh, I haven't. But he known. gave a keynote in Britain about basically TV and where it's going. And he okay. kept talking about how Netflix is kind of the future. Yeah. Like, that's where TV shows are going to be, is Netflix. Right. And Which so... Which is kind of interesting, because Netflix is just fading, just a tad, isn't it? It, it lost of, well, a, a lot of content not, recently. It lost content, but it's not losing original content. It's gaining original content pretty oh, quickly. Oh, okay. Like, they're starting to produce television shows. Like, it's going to be its own, like, kind yeah. of, like, HBO, it AMC is. kind and of I, thing. I like that a lot. Yeah. I think that's That's a be, really smart I think it's tool. really smart. Yeah. So, I mean, him talking about that kind of, I think, got our demographic kind of interested. Mm -hmm. And so, him being in Call of Duty is just... It's a natural jump, but I did not expect it. I have to yeah. be perfectly honest. Yeah, I was like, because this is like, spacey. it's it's still new. It's still new. They haven't yeah. like totally like indulged in this process yet, but it's definitely increasing. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's definitely because um, just our technology has become so great as far as like the CG animation and video games and stuff. It's almost like real people you look at stuff like halo 4 and everything yeah it's like almost like in indefinable <laughs> between yeah. real really and like is. cg and that's why i think it's getting movies are um being presented more as films almost okay kind yeah. of thing and that's why they're using this tool now because of course the, the star tool is like one of the oldest tools in film yeah. history. So now, now that this, um, like narratives and, um, almost like cinematography kind of things are being integrated so harsh into video games. Yeah. They're going to start jumping more on different film tools, you know? Yeah. I, that's a really good point actually. And I think that's, I think you're right. I think that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. But I also want to say, I think this is generally a good thing Absolutely. for Call of Duty because Kevin Spacey doesn't usually attach his name to a project unless it has a certain level of quality to it. Now, it could change. It could completely change. But I feel like he read the script and went, this is something that I would actually be a part of. You know that? Or he read the script and went, we need to rewrite it. Okay. Because, I mean, I mean he's done House of Cards and he refused to change uh, quality of the script. That's why he went to Netflix. Oh, and cool. produced it with Netflix. Yeah. So it's like, I can kind of see him being like, we, like, we need to do something. Like, this script needs to be rewritten for me to be a part of it. So I have hope for single player. Right. Which in is some, something that's definitely way downplayed in that series. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I feel like if you I thought I thought it attached, was really interesting that, mm -hmm. like, they decided to use, of, of all games... Call of Duty, yeah, for like yeah. an actor spotlight. That was really interesting. Yeah, because really, it's mostly multiplayer. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know. So I'm excited. We'll we'll see what happens. Really, it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what's our next news? Okay. So I just wanted to mention a uh, a, a new vinyl release coming out of an album that's very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> it is the the early November. Um, the Mother, the Mechanic, and the Path. And if you haven't heard the early November, they are an absolutely fantastic band. And there's something I like to call true emo, which is basically like a band that really express, expresses something sincerely from mm -hmm. the depths of their heart and not having to conform to the image of emo. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not 
constantly screaming all the time or wearing guy liners that they look like regular people but the lyrics as far as like the mix of melancholy and upbeat um melodies that they produced is uh, nothing short of brilliant and um i think i think this process was captured best in this specific album the mother of the mechanic in the path so um for anyone who hasn't uh listened to this just take a listen to it it's really really beautiful it's a good album <laughs> yeah <laughs> I you yeah, I felt like felt like I wasn't a part of this. But I no, that was a, it's a really good album. Um you should definitely check it out. Also vinyl is I'm glad that it's kind of seeing a resurgence. Oh yeah, absolutely. Kind of cool. You know, for me I I don't collect too much vinyl, but for the few albums that have just like so heavily influenced me, it's like I need to pay respect to these yeah, guys and definitely. just get it all, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so our next uh, piece of news is the Nintendo Art Gallery. It's called uh, Press Start. Yeah. Nintendo Charity Art Gallery, which is uh, funding the Morgan Autism Center. And um, yeah, you should totally check these out because it basically goes through all the Nintendo franchises. Yeah. With tons of different artists giving their own renditions about different art pieces. It's it's very, very cool. It's all online, which is yep. really cool too uh-huh. as well. So you can see that and you can bid. Yep. Uh, bidding ends the 16th. May 16th. May 16th. Yep. So, yeah, go on and, and see. And it's not like these are really expensive pieces either. I mean, some of them are because they're incredible. I'm sure a some few of them, of them yeah. will become really yeah. expensive with the snipers yeah, and stuff exactly. like that. exactly. Some of them are, are smaller prints, though, and they're not that expensive. And yeah. I mean, right now the bidding's at like 25 30 bucks for some of them. So. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, I mean, go check it out. Benefits autism center and uh, you, you'll just get like to really cool you'll, idea. You'll, yeah and you'll just get to see tons of people just express and place themselves into the franchises they've fell in love with yeah for so many years can you pick out a favorite piece either the pokemon one uh with the impending wave of pokemon oh or... you know what that is what? Those are all the Super Smash Bros. characters. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's like the Pokemon trainer and versus all the Yeah, Super the Smash three Brothers? Pokemon. Yeah. Okay. That, oh yeah, then that might be my favorite then. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Either like, that or Star Fox. Yeah, the Star Fox one. There's this uh-huh. one with James McCloud. It's a close-up on his face, and in the reflective sunglasses, you see Andross reaching uh-huh. out at him, and oh, just a beautifully it's, done piece. It's, it's really cool, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a really good one i think um out of all these pieces the star fox ones were the most impressive to me altogether but there's some pretty cool uh, a lot of cool pokemon ones as well and like all of them are cool but those are the ones that uh caught my attention the most definitely yeah and then speaking of nintendo uh our last piece of news is the nintendo e3 plan so uh this was something from a little bit ago but we didn't get a chance to talk about it because we were out of town last week right um, but uh, Nintendo is not doing an E3 press conference again. So that's also, first of all, really weird because they did yeah. that last year. They didn't have a press conference. They had like just a video uh-huh. and it streamed online and everybody was like, that's dumb. You're getting no hype. And they're kind of right. <laughs> and I, I can see the critics from, from where the critics are coming from because it's like, you're not getting any hype. You're not right. having a press conference, so nobody's talking about it at E3. Uh-huh. And that's a problem for Nintendo. And it was a problem last year. So they're doing it again, sticking to their guns, and I get it, but I'm kind of like, I think you need to have a conference, but whatever. It's fine, because they're also doing stuff at E3. Right. They're streaming the whole E3. Uh, it's called, like, the Nintendo Treehouse or something they're calling it. So their booth is going to be, like, huge, basically. Okay. And they're going to be streaming from that booth all the time. Uh-huh. Demos of games, info, news, the whole thing. And the biggest, most exciting yeah. thing is the uh, the Super Smash Bros. Invitational yep. Tournament, right? Yep. So along with, and obviously they're pushing Smash 4 in this whole thing. Yeah. So absolutely. every time they stream, they're going to be showing a lot of gameplay of Smash 4. Right. So along with that, what they're doing is, like you said, they're having a giant tournament. Giant. It's 16 players. 
So they're going to invite 16 players. It's going to mm-hmm. be... Um, and nobody knows the details yet, and this is what scares me. Yeah. Is I don't want this to be... I hope that this is actual top pro players Yeah. right now. And I hope that it's not YouTube celebrities. Right. I want, I want them to shy away from that. Yeah. Because I feel like you get to the point where you have... Because they say highly skilled. So they're going to get someone who's good in right. the competitive community. They they have to. It's not like they're just going to go out and get everybody just random. They're probably going to invite people like Ken because he's so well known and he was on Survivor. Right? Yeah. So people like Ken are going to come. They're going to be there. Yeah. But then you're going to have... My problem is if you try to get just get famous people or like internet famous people, then you're having Ken fight against like a YouTube celebrity or like... Just a famous person. Like, who are you thinking of well, as far as YouTube there's just Well, there's just a little... Like, someone like Ego Raptor? Well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, that that could that, definitely be a, that be a would, thing. That would get ugly. There are a <laughs> lot of YouTube gaming channels that That's are true. really popular. Yeah. And a lot of them like Nintendo. And they have good relationships with Nintendo. I mean, the announcement was Mega64. Mm-hmm. Did the announcement. Maybe they're a part of it. And it's like, at that point... Why are you even doing it? Yeah. It's an invitational to show off the competitive aspect because they even mentioned that right. in the announcement. They said, this is a competitive aspect of Smash. We're inviting 16 highly skilled players. And I mean, all around, they've just been really pushing for it, with especially from their last um, huge discussion on it. it yeah, exactly. So I, I, I'm worried about that being the case, and there's just small rumors going around. Um, I saw something on Reddit about uh, somebody had apparently had gotten a hold of the list, and it's not it's not unreasonable that he did because he was a former uh, caster, but he was a former commentator for Smash oh, okay. at MLG. Okay, so he used to do that. Yeah. So it's not unreasonable that he would have the list because he knows people, right? right. So. And he was saying, you know, I really don't like the list. Please, Nintendo, would you not do that? And he's like, there are people on this list that absolutely don't deserve it. So that got a lot of people thinking maybe it's uh, celebrities. That's too bad. The other the other thing is he could be talking about they're inviting a bunch of brawl players, maybe. And and not a lot of melee players. Hmm. Maybe they're in maybe they're inviting people who, you know, won MLGs seven years ago that don't play anymore. Hmm. you know it's interesting so, you bring up the brawl stuff because yeah uh, i think be. generally we all agree that like well yeah hands down brawl doesn't have as much competitive potential as melee but i think it like the outcome of this tournament might just depend on ultimately what we find out yeah the pacing that's is definitely the true. pacing and movement ability mm-hmm. of this new Smash is. Will it be more towards Brawl or, or more, more towards, towards melee? melee? Yeah. So if it ends up being a, a little more towards Brawl, some Brawl players might actually have an easier time with it. Yeah. Kind of thing. I just I so I don't I know. Hope not, but yeah. <laughs> and and really, that's from one tweet and a couple other just rumblings that R- people rumors have heard. are just flying everywhere. So kind of thing. I hope that it's not that. I hope yeah. that, and I'm not freaking out at this point because no. here's the truth: if it was all YouTube celebrities and one or two pros, fine. You know, items, four player free for all, fine. I don't care. It's up on the stage. I can ignore it like everything else Nintendo did. And when the game comes out, we can watch Mewtwo King and. And Ken beat the crap out of each other. You know, and, that's very true. Because, I mean, yeah. how many years have we completely ignored what Nintendo's done? Oh, we're going to have a GameStop tournament. And then it's items on, all stages, random, and yeah. people are just abusing Pokeballs. Like, right. how, how many times have we just ignored what they've done? We've we can, fought the power we can do over it again. and over yeah. and over again. I feel again. like the competitive community can do it again. So And they, they've shown so much strength and yeah. persistence I mean, this through... Is, through this whole, like, decade, I yeah. mean, 
we brought Melee back from the dead. Exactly. So We literally did yeah, that. Yeah, so I feel like I don't think Melee is going anywhere, and I don't think this community is going anywhere. No. I don't think it's going to change to using items just because Nintendo wants us to use items. Yeah. It's not going to happen. I mean, even if this new tournament ends up being like a fluffy bust, you know what? We'll be able to watch this thing and analyze so many new things in it. Yeah. You know? It's Different players, true. combos. Yeah. Items that pop up kind of thing. So, I, I even the worst case scenario isn't that bad no, to me right no. now. No, we're seeing Smash. The best case scenario is the best thing ever. So, yeah. I'm, yeah. that's what I want, obviously. <laughs> of course, of course. Because it's 16 actual, like, pro competitive players on the top of their game. You know, I, a new game. I, that could, would be awesome. I honestly feel like I could see a good chunk of pro players up there. Because when you, when you talk about YouTube celebrities, the... The pro players of Super Smash Bros. have gotten so much hype on uh, both all-around streaming and YouTube, especially when we look at that new um, Smash Bros. documentary. Yeah. It showed the great some of the greatest that's a really Smash Bros. Point. players uh -huh. of our time. And that's like, a good point. Nintendo could totally take some notes from that. Yeah. You know. That's a very good point. So. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm excited to see. I hope the list comes out soon. We can see who's in it. I mean, when is E3? E3 is... July? Or is it June? I don't remember. June. Ah, uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's in one or two months, so, you know, not, hopefully... Not the, too far away. Yeah, hopefully the list comes out, we get to see who's in it, we get to see, know a little bit more about the format of the tournament, and then, you know, I'm excited either way. Yeah, definitely. I just want to see more of Smash 4. I know, yeah. I know. I'm like, where oh. are the new characters? Come on. <laughs> also, just really quickly, completely gloss over this. Uh, it's also going to be available to play at Best Buy. Yeah. Which I was like, like, I can't believe we forgot to talk about that. Yeah. So along with announcing the Smash Invitational, they're also, they also announced they have a partnership with Best Buy. So you can go in on the days that E3 is going and play Smash at a Best Buy in your area. Which is It's going to be awesome. insanely it packed. Is fucking awesome. So I'm, I'm assuming they'll just have some like booth set up or something yeah i'm guessing i don't know how much there's gonna be but i'm gonna go try that i know right <laughs> it would really depend on like how insane the crowd it, is you know oh, i definitely would but i would wait in line <laughs> yeah i would wait in line for yeah. that just to try it out you have us stuff to talk about you know that's very true yeah oh it's, yeah. i'm sensing good discussion coming Another from that later in the yeah. future i see mm. <laughs> anyway, so I'm I'm excited what Nintendo is doing. Um, I hope we get to see a lot of Smash Four, and I hope we get to see some pro, pro players with their hands on Smash Four. Definitely, because that's really what I want to see. Yeah, I want to see them take the game because it's gonna take them an hour tops. Oh, so like this new competitive tournament, it's gonna be on 3DSs, isn't it? No, it's a Wii U tournament. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so Nintendo is just basically stalling us out then. Basically. <laughs> They're giving us well, little. Darn. They're giving us little nuggets. What about to see Best it. Buy? Oh, Best Buy is Wii U as well. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, it's a, oh, sweet. It's okay, a cool. It's a test of. It's the test of the Wii U. Great, uh, version, great. So. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. I yeah. I, I, I was under the impression it was 3DS since that's the thing coming out in the summer. No. Okay. No. It's, cool. Uh, so yeah, Excellent. they're definitely just giving us a little to hold us over. Yeah, that makes until me it comes out. Tons but more happy. I'm I'm all right with that. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, all right, so I think that covers all of our great news and shout-outs. And yes. now, for the main event of episode number seven, we are going to discuss the announcement of Pokemon, oh, yeah. Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. Also, I think it's really funny that it's the Alpha and the Omega, and I'm like, I don't know why you chose that besides just it being... A pair of words. They're gonna. They're, they're well. just trying. To, they're trying to become more and more dominant. You know. <laughs> That's so true. I mean, Pokemon is, is the Alpha and the Omega. Seriously, I mean, what is it? We look at the past remakes. It's like Leaf Green, Fire Red. Okay, but then we go to Heart Gold and Soul yeah. Silver. <laughs> we gotta go beyond Heart and Soul, man. That's we so gotta. True. We gotta go on Godly Dominion here. <laughs> that is so it's true. It's like, what the heck are they going to name their next remake? Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> God and Jesus. 
God black and Jesus white. There we go. All right, I did it. There you go, Nintendo. Satan black. <laughs> Satan black and God white. There we go. Yeah. Oh my god. I like it. <laughs> that wouldn't go uh, well. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> Let's let's uh, see a devil rush your am sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah, you go. That'll be wonderful. Get all uh, that lavender town creepiness in there. Jeez. So anyway, yeah, there you go, Nintendo. That was a your fun names. little segue. Um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> you, the Ruby and Sapphire are uh, are now being remade. This is this is exciting to me because of several reasons. Just mm-hmm. right off the bat, this is not just packaging them, like, together and doing, like, gold or, or yellow. It's, like, pack... It's, like, completely remaking. Like, taking Ruby and remaking it in the new engine. In the right. XY engine. That's exciting to me. In the new 3D yeah, engine. Yeah. It's gonna because be really exciting. you not only get all of the, kind of, Pokemon and you get, like, the story, but you get the same towns and everything, and it's a really... In a whole new view and yeah, experience. Yeah, exactly. It's a really nice way... To bring those games back and have it be more than just here's the game again on a different platform. Yeah. It's absolutely. it's something a little bit different. Yeah. And I'm really glad that they decided to do that instead of, oh, we'll just we'll just package it, here's a couple more Pokemon. We've changed a few things around and here you go. Instead mm-hmm. it's like it's been a few years. I mean, how how many years has it been since Ruby and Sapphire came out? Long time. Long I can't, time. I can't yeah. tell you. Maybe like I want to say like 2002, 2003, something wow. like that. It might have been. I yeah. think you might be right. Yeah. It's, so it's been maybe almost 10 years, and I'm glad that it's not just, you know, red and blue to yellow. I'm glad it's a remake. Yeah. Of the two of them. And have, have you played the other remakes? So I played some of them. Like I played, uh, um, well, I played the shit out of yellow. I can tell yeah. you that much, but that was a while ago. But like leaf um, green or soul silver. So I haven't I haven't played okay. I played soul silver. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that was just briefly. Yeah. Um, and that was, yeah, that was really brief, and then I just didn't play it at all after that. Okay. Um, well, the the amazing thing about soul silver, and I feel like they've been doing this with some of their future games, is like they've been heavily integrating other generations into it. The amount of like extra content in Heart Gold and Soul Silver was like absolutely incredible with mm-hmm. like there's a ton of different legendaries in there and um what is it so you basically got to have all all the uh second gen legendaries and then all the first gen legendaries mm-hmm. which the original silver did not have they didn't yeah. have the f- first gen legendaries and also they had Grodon H- Grodon and Rakoiza and uh Kyogre <laughs> hiding somewhere yeah. and um there was one or two I can't remember. And then on top of that, when you beat Red on the top of the mountain, you got to get a first gen and a third gen starter. That's actually at the end cool. of the yeah. game, you know. And I feel like the the future games, like especially with Black Two, Black and White Two, and as and X and Y, are really taking a hint from that and. Um, just integrating all the generations yeah. as a whole and giving tons of extra content here and there. Like, so many more legendaries than just the basic few, you know? So, I'm glad, yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned content because that's something I'm excited about because the conversations about X and Y, that's what all people always bring up. Yeah. It's like, this is really, the, my friend told me, this is really the game that convinced me that Pokemon was going to keep evolving right. without completely changing. No. Because X and Y did a really good job of like, this is from Gen two, this is from Gen three. Yeah, you know, pick a Gen one starter, right. do that kind of stuff is is just riddled throughout this game. Yeah, and definitely. I'm and I'm really excited that that's the direction they're going with the, with the new ones because how, like that's just gonna it's just gonna be so much. This recycling and integration process is nothing short of brilliant because yeah. what it does is it brings back the nostalgia for the ones who love yeah. and started with these mm-hmm. older generations and then reintroduces newer kids to the older generations yep. while integrating every single generation yeah. into the entire game. It's, it's like you said, it's just brilliant. It's really smart. 
Yeah. The way they're doing it. Because they're keeping content really high. Yeah. While not just throwing new stuff in, but bringing old stuff and making it new. Yeah. And... It's new stuff in combination of newer people re-falling in love. Yeah, exactly. With everything they've started with, you know? And like you said, bringing the old stuff back and making it new, that's nostalgia. Exactly. And it and which it's is a really huge well factor. Huge factor. For in Pokemon our especially. Culture. Yeah. I mean definitely. For Pokemon it's enormous. I, I think the reason that most people play Pokemon still, uh, and, and I because I I know all of my friends and we're all in our early twenties now, still play right. Pokemon. Yeah. The reason that we started to play Pokemon again was nostalgia. Absolutely. The reason we keep playing Pokemon is nostalgia. Yeah. So I, I feel like they're doing a really good job of that. Yeah. But they're not just recycling it. No, like you say, they're integrating not. it and they're changing it. Yeah, and they're they're just adding content, and that's what I want to see. I want to not just finish like you know uh, one of the ruby or sapphire. I don't just want to finish it and then be like, oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah, you know, I want to be like, where can I go and find this? You know, where's Mewtwo? Right? Yeah, right. where's uh, where's some of the legendaries? Yeah. And then, like, absolutely. go and find them. And I feel and like that's the direction. They're Ruby, going. I think Ruby will definitely take a hint from its past predecessors and integrate a ton of other generations. Hopefully one that haven't, hopefully ones that haven't been seen lately. Like, yeah. There aren't too many that have gotten completely ignored, but, um, like, I, I, I can take a break from first gen now because it got a lot of love in X yeah. and Y. And, um... That's why I want to play X and Y the most. Absolutely. I think for a lot of, like, uh, quote, first-gen purists, yeah. they could really give X and Y a chance because of all the first-gen love it gives mm-hmm. it. And along with the Mega Evolutions, personally, for me, seeing the starters evolve, that's like something out of a kid's dream, yeah. you know? Do you remember all that stuff about, like, the Polka Gods? Yes. And everything? Yes, like, I do. Which oh, urban I, legends, man. I loved those legends so much, but it's stuff like, oh, Charizard evolves into charcoal mm-hmm. or something like that. It's like the X Mega Charizard X totally reminds me of something I'd imagine as charcoal. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. And it, I think it's absolutely brilliant that they're bringing them back, but at the same time evolving them further. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And they really are evolving the formula. It's not just that it's in three D. No. You know, they're doing they're doing a lot of really interesting things. Also, the fact that it's in 3D changes a lot to begin with. Absolutely. So You know, I thought the process would be really jarring at first. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just the main town where it's, like, kind of third-person parallel gets a little confusing sometimes. Yeah. But other than that, it, it was such a fun and beautiful process to see. Though, honestly, I will admit I love... I'll always love the little, like, disfigured 8-bit versions from yeah, red and blue. It's like, definitely. this doesn't look like the Pokemon, but it looks cool. <laughs> I love it. This doesn't look any like anything, <laughs> but I don't care. It's awesome. So and true. the 8-bit cries, which yeah, are awesome. Yeah, of course. Gonna miss those. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited that as long as they keep, you know, the amount of just stuff that they're adding into yeah. it yeah, and keep absolutely. it fresh then I think it's totally acceptable that they just want to re-release these. Yeah. Um, um, let's take a, let's take a look oh, at some yeah. of the shout outs. Um, let's see here. So I think we'll mention one of Connor Tridy's points. Um, he's basically talking about how the first two remakes came with accessories like Soul Silver mm-hmm. came with a Poke Walker yeah. and Leaf Green came with something, a, a pouch, I guess. Um, so he was wondering, what is Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire gonna have with so it? So that's a really good point. Yeah. I never uh, really played either of the remakes all that much. I got amused, so I didn't get the uh, special yeah. accessories. Yeah, that's what kind of what happened with me. Yeah. Uh, like somebody let me borrow it, basically, Soul right, Silver. Right, So, um, yeah, I never really knew anything about the Pokewalker or anything else. But I think it is kind of an interesting concept that I think he's right. I think they, they always do that. Well, they have for the last two. It, so. it, it's, a, it's a fun little pattern, I think. 
it's a great idea to keep up with that, and I hope they will. Yeah. I honestly don't have a clue what they'll put in there, though. <laughs> I literally cannot think of anything they would put in there. I'm thinking about it now, and I'm like, I don't even, I don't really even know. Connor wants a trumpet. <laughs> that I wouldn't like mind that. Like. Yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> a I trumpet guess. to control your Pokemon in battle. Let's go with that. I like that. All right. <laughs> Sand attack. <laughs> uh, that that'd be a fun little. Yeah. Thing. What what could be in there? I mean, I think I maybe know. like a little po a mini Pokedex kind of thing. Yeah, I mean that was the only thing I could think of. Fun. Like the yeah. Poke Walker was was pretty big, I guess, in their kind of strategy, and I feel like a Pokedex. Could maybe another be like little electronic item. Yeah. Of sorts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, he also says there's all these bonus features. Um, and this is good. This goes back kind of to our conversation on, uh... Like, additional yeah. Pokemon and stuff. Yeah, and, like, more content right. being added. Absolutely. And I I really agree with you here, Connor. I really want to see that. <laughs> yeah. I want to see them definitely. add... I want to see them add stuff. Maybe we go to a different continent. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be really cool. I don't think they do like the what content, what Leaf but... Green and Fire Red did after the end of the Pokemon League mm -hmm. is you still couldn't catch Mewtwo after that. What you had to do is venture on a bunch of different distant islands. And That's they, very. They cool. had like six to ten of them, I think, and like wow. it was just a bunch of different little adventures too. And that's where like a bunch of like the later generation Pokemon came in. Okay, kind of thing. Yeah. that's a cool idea. And so that must be what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I really, that would be very cool yeah. to see that. And I think they'll probably do something like that again. Right. Um, Lately, I feel like they've been doing a really good job of just adding extra stuff after the Pokemon League yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Like they did that in X and Y, like a little detective adventure kind of thing. And right. Something we similar to that. Black and White too as well. Oh, yeah. Like um, they had these like, bad like in team plasma there are like these priest guys mm -hmm. kind of thing and you had to track them all down after like the pokemon league and yeah after you cracked down on team plasma and stuff right. which was pretty cool so yeah i mean it, just more content and yeah. it's a good thing so whether it be like the islands and fire red leaf green or just open up another content because that or continent because that would be fucking awesome that would be go go back to like first gen and <sighs> that would be weird but that'd be kind of cool i would i would love I that but i don't think they'll do that because uh <laughs> i mean for soul silver it made sense because the the original gen 2 was connected to gen 1 but mm -hmm. gen 3 was the one that f like just totally like flew off and disconnected everything yeah you know? yeah which i guess kind of leeways into my next point is like I'm really happy about revisiting this generation specifically because it originally was the one that made me drop Pokemon for mm -hmm. a while. Yeah. Just because since like so since uh Silver and Gold were so heavily integrated into uh Pokemon Red and Blue, right. I thought that it would keep on that track and I was so heavily jarred when, when it didn't at all. Yeah, there was not a single Pokemon or place that you recognized at all. And e even more um, more disappointing for me was the disconnection of backwards compatibility. Yeah. You know, because after that, I, I just thought about it and was like... Because the, the biggest thing for me is the backwards compatibility that I love. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me keep revisiting Pokemon... Because people can fairly argue that all the Pokemon games are really similar. You know, collect yeah. the eight badges, yep. fight a villainous team yeah. who's trying to take over that region kind of thing. But the backwards compatibility makes it so that you can take your Pokemon, your companions, mm -hmm. that you grew up with an entire adventure, and continue on with them yeah. while making new friends all together. And for me... That's what changes it from a repetitive journey to a continuous traveling of the world. Yeah. Kind of thing, you mm -hmm. know? And way back when Ruby and Sapphire came out, and I thought, oh, they're not connecting the Pokemon games anymore. 
Yeah. It's just like, I'll be just catching the same Pokemon over and over or just like making no progress or the same small yeah. amount of progress in with one each game. single adventure. Yeah. Adventure. And which, which was, um, pe- people are saying fairly that it's necessary because they revamped the entire battle system and stats and everything. That's true. Yeah. But it really betrayed their slogan of gotta catch them all. Yeah, because now you have, now you're just, and, and I understand why they did it outside of like revamping the battle system, because mm-hmm. they want to just, okay, it's a new game, it's a new land, it's a new adventure, so it's all new Pokemon. My problem with that is, it works, I feel like Pokemon works so much better when you build on what you've already created. Right. Which is why I think so many people have liked X and Y. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there are people who disagree with me. I think there are people out there who really think that a singular adventure is what they want. They want an all new land and all new Pokemon. It's true. And new strategies to develop and, mm-hmm. and they don't want to like have a encyclopedic knowledge of all the Pokemon, even though you don't really need that. But uh, uh it gets pretty complicated. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you might you might you have to be like, What type is that? Oh shit! Oh okay. Yeah, Especially since with my team. dual types now. Yeah, well, oh, my that's, yeah, that's something that I think they could go away from. If you want to know the truth, really? Yeah, I really do because that's just adding too much of like. I I I, I personally love the complexity well, of it. Yeah, maybe. like it it turns. It's something that helps turn Pokemon into something that could be seriously strategic. Well, you know? that's that's true. That's actually a really good point. So, yeah. Yeah. and it, it also helps balance out all the Pokemon. Well, so, like, with six hundred of them, it's hard to do it without having dual types. You're absolutely right yeah. about that. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I don't know. I mean, so I, I can understand why people would like things like Ruby and Sapphire better. I just think Pokemon works better when you have everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. And you have all these different types of Pokemon. Yes, it gets really complicated, but like you said, that way you can still you can still beat the game with the Pokemon you find normally in the world, mm-hmm. right? But highly skilled players can then go and find the extra content with the legendaries and with Pokemon from the first and second generation. Yeah, and, absolutely. And then they can make different teams and do everything. It's all about having the extra content for those players. Yeah. And I think that's what Ruby and Sapphire was missing. It's just like, yeah, I can finish the game, but where's what everything now? else? Because we, yeah. weren't, we weren't sure that, like, at that point, backwards compatibility would come back mm-hmm. since they just cut it off. Yeah, they just got rid of it completely. But they quickly redeemed themselves because yeah. in the same generation, they did the remake of Leaf Green. Mm-hmm. And that brought, um, that brought the connectivity back. Yeah. And then yeah. Soul Silver came out and it's like, okay, we have our two generations. And from then on, every single Pokemon game has been connected. Yeah. Like I think they quickly realized that backwards compatibility is one of their strongest suits as a franchise that goes above any other game franchise mm-hmm. in that specific aspect. So, yeah. um th- there's no way they'll do away with that again, and that yeah. makes me happy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, moving on, uh, we're going to give a, a very special thank you and shout out to Brian Steiner, who um, showed us this uh, really interesting scan, uh, magazine scan. Um, from what she says, it hasn't been confirmed, but nobody's been denying it yet. And um, what it reveals is basically that Mudkip and Trico are going to get a mega evolution, which makes a lot of sense because... Uh, Blaziken already has a mega evolution. Mm -hmm. And then um, a more interesting tidbit is that there is going to be a fusion evolution with Rayquaza, Grodon, and Kyogre. Um, It's obviously pointed to it, but the scan just had a silhouette of the figure, so we don't know what it looks like yet, which is really interesting. But this, this news here has me absolutely ecstatic because... Pokemon Fusion is something I've wanted in games for a long time, and they they actually did that in Black 2 with mm. the legendary Pokemon on the cover. Right. So... Yeah. Um, 
But then they didn't do it in X and Y, so I was just thinking, oh, is this going to be a one-time thing or yeah. something? But it looks like they're going to slowly integrate it more and more kind of thing. And what I'm really hoping for in the future is that there's going to be fusion between, like, regular Pokemon. Like, almost like even a breeding kind of thing, you know? You breed two Pokemon. Yeah. And you and get a you, you get a different different type be, of Pokemon. That would be really cool. And it would finally get people off of freaking ditto breeding all the time. <laughs> Give the man a break. <laughs> oh, poor, poor guy. Poor ditto. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this is this is really interesting to me because I feel like you go a lot of ways with that. We don't know how it's going to work yet, obviously. Um, but yeah, it could definitely be interesting. We we definitely have some hints from um black and white to how that fusion worked is um basically there's this dna tool that um mixed the two legendaries together mm -hmm. and what oh, what was it called it was like fusion bolt or like uh f freeze bolt or something like that it was two different types of attacks in one so it was like doubly effective kind of thing, yeah you know so i feel like that's that will be a direction that they'll kind of go in, you know. And I talked a little to Briah about discussing, like, um, so for in Black and White 2, you could not carry over that fused form. Like, you couldn't carry the tool with mm. you to fuse them, so you had to separate them and then transfer them to X and Y kind right. of thing. And it's like, I, I'm i hoping that for this one, they'll actually let you have the tool for the next generation, yeah. or at least... Let you have the fused form. Yeah. Let you have that option. Baraya says it'll be way too overpowered, <laughs> which I I feel like could be true. Yeah. But I mean, personally, in previous generations. Yeah. Per personally, I feel like a lot of legendaries are really overpowered. But what she said was, um, they're not good competitive wise in a move set or something, which is oh, interesting. Okay. So. Yeah, that's. I don't know a lot about the competitive. They, they, they don't Pokemon? really use legendary Pokemon. Yeah, that's like, what the I've only heard. one I've seen is like Heatran, mm. and that's about it. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, because I I so I don't really know a lot about that. So but really stat comment. wise, they are off yeah. the charts yeah. compared yeah. to like almost every other Pokemon. So it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so this yeah. fused form, you can only imagine. And I mean, is this the other thing I'm thinking is is this a, like a Mega Evolution as well? I wouldn't call this a Mega Evolution, like. Yeah. You might not even call it an evolution per se. I like to call it an evolution. But yeah, but it's more mainly just, a, just fusion. a fusion. Yeah, that's how that's how the X and Y or the black two, white two one worked. Uh, excuse me, but um, yeah, it's looking pretty darn intense. I'm thinking it's just gonna be kind of like black and white two, where it's like an optional fusion between the two, depending on what okay. version you have. Yeah, the picture. Kind of looked confusing. I was like, "Are all three of them fusing yeah, together?" I don't. Yeah, I and wasn't like, sure. I was just trying to look at that silhouette so deeply because it looked like it was Rockoise's body, of course, but it looked like it had Grodon's claws, but Kyogre's fin at the yeah, end. Yeah, I'm not sure. I I I want all three. I think that'd be really intense, but it's probably just gonna be between two. Yeah. If the scan is legit, but yeah. it seems pretty legit. I have confidence that okay. it's gonna be. Uh... I mean, it would just it's re it'd be really cool for just once again more content sake. Yep. Because absolutely, like, just just more stuff to do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and I'd also love to see a fusion of like starters. Oh my god! <laughs> like not just legendaries, but like. You know, if I just use anything. Bulbasaur yeah. And, yeah, I mean, that'd be awesome. I Bulbachar! Yeah. <laughs> Fire leaf! Uh, I love it. I love it. Oh, it's going to be so, so awesome. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I hope that that's... Uh, I hope that they do more than just, like, there's one. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you confuse one, and then that's it. Yeah. I hope that they actually go forward and... I really hope fusions. so, too. It would, it would turn the entire, like, Pokemon franchise on its head with complexity. Yeah. Definitely, but, I mean, it would be such an incredible, incredible um, It'd be really... change of events. Yeah, seriously. Like, the only thing I feel like they're worried about is just, like, data content management kind of thing. <laughs> That's definitely true. But they don't, they don't have to do a ton right away. It can kind of yeah. be like the Mega Evolutions, like, oh, you can mix just these two Pokemon 
and then just like a couple more and yeah. more after that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that's the path I feel like they're taking with these mega evolutions, yeah. you know. I feel like through Omega Ruby and then maybe X2 and then after that they're right. going to slowly add more and more and more and more mega evolutions. Yeah. And um definitely I can see the third generation starters all getting mega evolutions. And uh, another shout out to Connor Shady really quick. Um, a couple um, mega evolutions he was looking for or would like to see is like a mega Flygon and a mega Salamence. Who, those are both really awesome. Pokemon. Yeah, they are actually. Yeah. <laughs> I would like. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I I feel like what's a uh, mega you want to see? I don't know. I can't. I can't think of one off the top of my head that I'd be like, yes. I just want to see like the potential of it. Like I just want to see. Yeah. However much you can do, you I, know what I mean. I I know what you mean. So definitely, my mm-hmm. prayers were answered with Mega Gengar and Gyarados because those were on top of my yeah, list. Oh definitely. my gosh, they're so great! <laughs> but another one I'm li- really looking forward to is um. Do you know Gallade? I don't think so. You know Gardevoir, right? Yeah. So basically, in Gen Four, a male counterpart came to Gardevoir card called Gallade. Okay. It was an optional evolution for male mm. uh, Raltzes. And I ended up raising one of those because at the same time, Tommy ra- was raising oh. a guard of arms. Nice. Like, I'll be your rival. <laughs> and I am absolutely in love with this thing. He is such a beast. And I, he's cool looking as well. And just has such an awesome, like, different type That's really set. Cool. I think I have, like, Psycho Cut close combat earthquake and x scissor on this thing what he's just like an offensive monster and it's totally awesome and i would love to see a mega evolution of him yeah and they already have a mega evolution of gardevoir so oh wow yeah Jeez. that's the one i'd like to yeah. see yes I, I don't know if they're gonna open up fusion fusion is real i don't know if they'd open it up i mean they're not gonna open up this soon no but i don't know if they'd ever open it up to all pokemon That'd be way point. too crazy. Yeah. I, feel I like... could see it maybe down the line similar types. Yeah. Like just maybe. following the breeding rules, basically. Okay. Yeah. Like if they have to be humanoid and usually same t- type, type or like yeah. same like, uh, how do you call it? Like figure mm, shape. Okay. Uh, yeah. You, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't so, know. Maybe following those rules. We'll More see. content. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen in Ruby and Sapphire, but no. it might happen after that. I mean, who knows? If this is the, the direction they're going. generation after this? Yeah, if this is the direction they're going, it might happen. I can I can see it. Because, like, X and Y is definitely pushing the mega, yeah. the mega evolution, and it's like, what will they do after that? Yeah. Kind mm-hmm. of thing, you know? So, um... Right. Okay. Just all around, what do you look... What are you most excited for? I'm most excited for to, to actually like play through Ruby and Sapphire because I've never played through the whole thing. Uh-huh. So I'm, and I think this is something like since it's a remake and it's in 3D and it's the new kind of system and everything, I'm excited to play through it. That's yeah. really what I'm most excited for. I, I have to 100% agree with you. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, again, this was the, this was the generation that, forced me into hiatus and I really left with a bad taste in my mouth of Mm -hmm. Pokemon after going into this one and I'm like I really I did get through the whole thing but uh, I was just kind of trudging through it after a while and I was like I really need to look at this with a a brighter perspective you know and really enjoy this world and I feel I can do that now because I know all of my old friends from generation to generation to generation will be right there with me. Yeah. Kind of thing. And like I said before, it's it's not a one-off journey anymore. It's no. It's the next journey it, it, on yeah. a long traveling exactly. journey. Exactly. You know? That's what, and that's why I think this is so strong. I have ne- I've never done that before. I lost my, my uh, saves long ago. I don't have them. Well, but you, you know I what? Think like carrying through that journey is like one of the strongest things about Pokemon. You could get started on it now. I could. You have I Black really Two. Have Black Two. And it, if you get Ruby, you could transfer yeah. him over. That's it's the start. 
Yes, the start the of my start ju- of your journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more shout out each for Connor Chidey and Brian Steiner. Just what, um, just what they're looking forward to is, uh, well, I guess we kind of mentioned, uh, Connor's, mm-hmm. what he's looking forward to is right. like more content, more mega evolutions yeah. and the, um, the special accessory. Yeah. And then what, uh, Baraya is really looking forward to is, um, uh, more stuff with the custom characters. Mm-hmm. And I definitely agree with that. I want, I want to see a custom character without being forced to wear a hat. Seriously. You have to wear a hat in X and Y all the time, which is really weird. Cause you can get stylish haircuts. <laughs> and I'm like, come on! I can't even I see it. I paid good money for this it's, die. It's like, uh, it's like uh, in Skyrim. You know, you you spend an hour making your character, and then you never see their face. Oh, it's like gosh. it's so true. Yeah. So I'm hoping, like, I feel like it'll be a little better because even if they have to have their head accessory or whatever. The third gen main character guy wore a bandana, not a hat. Ooh, mixing it up. Do you remember he had the short white hair? I do. Yeah. 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 So I'm good to see his hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I totally agree with that. I think custom characters is something that they're still missing. Like you yeah. still need to be able to make they're, your character. They're going in the right they're, direction yeah, with X they and are, Y. They did a great job with like mm-hmm. cool clothing and stuff. Yeah. Loved yeah. it. Loved it so yeah. much. But they they just need to keep pushing it a little more and more, like, um, more skin tones, more yeah. sizes. Yeah, and I mean, really, um, you're Nintendo. I mean, you have the entire Mii system. Exactly, You can yeah. kind of implement that in a lot of ways mm-hmm. into Pokemon to make some more custom, custom aspects of characters, for sure. Definitely, so. yeah. And then uh, one more thing, Baraya, that loved in... Uh, that was exclusively to Gen Three was the uh, the beauty pageants. I don't. Do you remember? No, that? I don't remember that. Yeah, it was interesting. So like every city had a gym and then a beauty pageant where you could get a badge and then a ribbon from the beauty pageant. I remember that. You do barely, <laughs> but yeah, I remember the ribbon. Yeah. So really basically, funny. you'd throw a Pokemon in there. Yeah. And do attacks for the audience, and then they're like. Oh, that was so beautiful or something. Personally, I did not get how to win that. I tried a I'm couple sure. times, so it's like, do you gust, I hope it's good. <laughs> Is it okay? No. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But maybe I'll try a little harder this time. It's just that thing of taking the world a little slower and enjoying it yeah. more, you know? Yeah. Which is so hard for me in Pokemon because every single game that comes out, I love to binge it. <laughs> you know, I I just get hooked on it and finish it in like two days. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> I don't know. I can't do that with Pokemon. Maybe I'm weird. No, it's better because like Pokemon is definitely a game that you can pick up and put down really fast in between like yeah. small periods between of time. other stuff yeah, yeah that's very true so i'm no i'm the weird one <laughs> it's not you well it's thank me. you yes. thank you for making me feel better <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, man so well that was uh that was a good conversation that was a good, that was a good discussion about pokemon i think we're really excited about yeah, the direction it's, gonna it's be going to so, coming out in November. Yeah. So, really fast. I'm starting to see my game lineup formulating. Like, um, what is it? I think it's going to go Smash 3DS, mm-hmm. then Kingdom Hearts re- Remix 2.5. Oh, God. 2.5 is coming out. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Amazing. I'm actually really excited about 2.5. And then the next Pokemon game. Yeah. And then we'll got a whole nother year. And then we just, you know, buy a Wii U and get Smash 4. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's gonna be inevitable. We have to uh, see. We have we to ha- see how it feels. God. Definitely. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I'm just. Uh, and, and the more, it, it really depends on like the Best Buy thing. If we go to Best Buy and we're like, yeah, I have to get this. It's a whole console to buy. Yeah. It's like oh it's my gonna god. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be yeah. rough. It's gonna be crazy. Very least, I'll get the 3DS one. Yeah, I'm excited about Smash Four and the 3DS. It was yeah. very good. It'll be fun. All right, so um. 
if you would like to respond to anything we said, tell us why you're excited about Pokemon or Smash 4 or whatever. Or anything. Anything Just at all. Tell us everything yeah. you um, love. We'll talk yeah. about it. <laughs> Go to, uh, <laughs> go to, we have, we have a website, fan, thefanvoice.com. Where um, we post tons mm-hmm. of articles and where you can also see all of these podcasts if you want to yes. listen into our past discussions and the, the voice of the people as well who we've yes. shouted out and they're all, <laughs> all of their great opinions as well. Mm-hmm. Just take a listen to those as well as, um, all the articles we keep up with. Yeah. Um, we're posting articles all the time. All the time. A lot of news yeah. up on that. So, so go yeah. check that out. Uh, we're also on Twitter, Fan Voice Podcast, Facebook, uh, the fan slash voice. the Fan Voice Podcast, yep. um, uh, YouTube.com slash the Fan Voice Podcast. Okay. That's our channel. <laughs> and, um, and our yeah. email. Oh, yeah. Fan at the Fan Voice.com. If you want to give us a super awesome, lengthy message or review on something we've discussed or just want to tell us about maybe something we should discuss. Yeah. Or anything yeah. like that. Shout out topics. That is one thing I, I wanted to mention last time. Didn't get a chance. Like, tell us what topics you think we should go over. Yeah. Um, that'd be great. We might uh, be looking into just picking up a topic you guys are interested in. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Shout us out. All right. So this has been uh, episode lucky number seven. Oh, uh, yeah. And we are rolling good and rolling high and just progressing through everything. And we're so happy for all of the responses everyone has given us. It's been great. And um, that's what the fan voice is about. You know, we're not asking you for money or anything like that. The only yeah. thing we are asking from you is to express yourself. Tell and us it makes what's up. up. Yeah. It makes us you happy talk about it. to give your opinions to the world kind of thing, you know? So just... Uh, keep listening and we'll keep listening to your replies and yeah until next time we'll see you guys at episode eight yes <laughs> lucky right. number eight crazy eight crazy there eight. oh there we go that's i gotta better. i gotta come up with a special <laughs> thing for every number yeah, i was like now. lucky number we already did the lucky numbers it's gotta be crazy <laughs> crazy eight it'll be crazy next week crazy. i don't know what we're talking about but, it's but it'll be totally be crazy. crazy. <laughs> so, all right. look all right. for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Yeah. Woo-hoo. All right. We'll talk to you guys next week. All right. Thank you so much. See you later.